Hey guys, uh, it is Friday the 28th, is it the 28th? Yes. I'm here with the update, finally. <laughs> oh, oh. I wanted to give more updates, but I had plans for this particular book, The City We Became, and I've just been busy. I don't think I explained what this was about, but I did finish it yesterday. It's uh, my Paris book for the amazing readathon. I already submitted it and I took a plane ride because I have plenty of GRC left. So double the points for an almost tome. The synopsis here is the city of New York is becoming born, becoming alive. Um, and N.K. Jemison has this idea of how it anthropomorphizes. Apparently this is a thing that cities do and sometimes it goes wrong and New York is kind of new, unique in a way because it's made up of five boroughs so because something goes wrong and you find out something is also impeding or making it difficult for this to happen. Um, so the five boroughs, their avatars in its essence, um, come alive to kind of help the city in its infancy and also fight the bad guy, the uh, nemesis or whatever have you. Oh, nemesis, I think, is a good term. I wound up giving this 4.5 stars. I laughed, <laughs> which I wasn't expecting. Um, my pet theory before I read this, um, having seen other people's reviews, is that New Yorkers, people who either lived here long enough or um, came here and just, you know, some people who are transplants are just New Yorkers born somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, people who fully, who truly understand the city really enjoy it. And those who don't or don't understand cities in general, not don't understand cities, but don't understand the feeling, the underbelly, the nuance of a city in a kind of abstract way probably won't like this uh i'll um say also that if you don't like sort of eldritch terror type things and either horror or sci-fi you might not really enjoy this either but that being said i do i do don't like lovecraft but i do like the like Lovecraftian monsters and the Eldritch terror type thing. So I thoroughly enjoy this. This is so New York. Um, in the clip before uh, this, I showed you I was reading outside um, the Bronx River Art Center. So there's a Bronx Art Center mentioned in here, and so I thought that would be really cool to go there. I knew there was another book after this, but I kind of forgot. And when I was getting towards the end, I was like, how, wait, how is this going to wrap up? Because the main story is like the birth of the city and finding the city's avatar and um, kind of fighting off this nemesis and... I kind of forgot in the listening because I listened to the audiobook. I did I did some tandem reading, but I forgot in reading that there would be another book after this. And in the author's note, she mentions a trilogy, so there's going to be yet another one that's not out yet. Um, I didn't think this would go beyond the scope of what's happening to New York City, but it did a little bit. We have sort of a wrap up of sorts of 
the main issue and plot in this one but I figure probably the next one we're gonna go to a more global scale um, and I'll be interested to know if NK Jemisin like does that and we see the how this works for other cities can she get the gist of other cities um is there prejudice because it's an american city and when i say that i mean like the americas not the u.s but also then is there another level of prejudice because this is a u.s city um it's it was kind of mind-blowing to me that the only ones that had been born were now New York just now in this book and Sao Paulo for all of the Americas, North, South, Central, Caribbean. The, there was an attempt for one other city and that's it. I'm just like, huh, fascinating. Um, so yeah, it's it's hard to describe. Like I'm a native of New York. I was born and raised here in the Bronx. It was really cool to um, he mentioned places and locations that I've been to in all five boroughs, uh, and others I haven't in all five boroughs. I think the audio narrator did an amazing job with the accents obviously the New York accents but we have a character who's uh, from Sao Paulo and then from Hong Kong and I feel like they did a decent enough job particularly Sao Paulo not an expert at a Brazilian accent in English but um, I think that that a narrator did a a decent Brazilian Portuguese accented New York English. <laughs> if that makes sense. Right? Um, and the same for the the Hong Kong uh, character. So like are we brought if we broaden the scope in the next book, are we broadening the amount of accents this narrator is gonna bring in? Because yes. The um male and female characters as well. I also wanna say that the sound effects in the background, some effects that were put on their voice when they went into like cityscape was really cool. And lastly I have to say that the um this is a really good book. I, I thought it would be, but like switching to like a more spiritual perspective. Um, last year, the idea of the spirit of place is uh, something I was exploring a little bit and I want to explore more of. And I think this is a good book um, to give you an idea of how that can be done. Um, in so many ways like and if you are uh, the type of person that works with the spirit of place um or is looking for that kind of spiritual a uh, pagan maybe aspect um in a city this book is a good example of a starting point um maybe if you are into pop culture paganism or pop culture magic this is also a good jumping off point so i appreciate that i might do another video like discussing that at some point and bring this book up so 11 minutes on that um quick interlude i did um start and dnf a book clementine book one not for the amazing readathon at this point i thought maybe but this city would became was taking too long <sighs> this was for clementine book one and two comic book graphic novels that were this month's pick for the ramos comics book club and 
I was falling asleep and I didn't like the art style half the time. Some of the panels didn't go in a logical order and the art style was just messy enough that I couldn't tell people apart once they got to like Clementine and Amos got to the snow um got to Vermont they were there I forgot where they were and it was just like all snow and everybody's all bundled up it was hard to tell people apart um Amos because of his distinctive hat but even Clementine the main character I was mixing up with other people not a good thing and so this is set in the universe of the walking dead i have not read or watched that so but it's a big enough popular enough um world that i know basically zombies take over and this is about people trying to survive and that time so clementine is a teenager she says she's about 17. apparently this is based off a video game um maybe even a video game series this this character so do with that what you will i didn't know that till we did the live show and i'll put a link to the live show below i just did not care i knew i wasn't gonna love this because zombies don't do anything for me unless they're like korean movie zombies and then i'm terrified and y'all know i don't like i don't find it fun to be scared so, um, but I was willing to go into it. We've read some other horror comics that wasn't, weren't so bad. So I was like, probably not going to be a five star, but why not? These are thickums. I'm talking and I actually have them still. Yeah. So this is book one. I don't know where to put book two, but we were supposed to read both. It's, it's a thick one for a graphic novel. Um, and the color, the cover, or color, but inside it's, it's all, it's all black and white. <sighs> I could have finished this, but I was just so reluctant to pick it up, and then I'm like, I got actual things I want to read. So the day of the readathon came, I mean the live show came, and I was just like, I'm just gonna DNF. I'm just gonna put it down as a DNF wasn't for me we talked and <laughs> nobody liked this even people who watched the walking dead um particularly people who have played the video game that stars clementine they were like they just like the author seemed to have retconned um some things or like it was like put her back into dangerous situations when her story was wrapped up in the video game and i'm like whoo Glad I was not invested because, yeah, this wasn't good. Um, I just put it as a DNF because I, I got about 50% of the way through and I was like, I don't, I don't care. Like, what? What? Why? Why? I don't know. And apparently book two wasn't any better. So that was a DNF. Um, I also actually finished, um, oh, well, this can count as a DNF for graphics it's on which started, uh, but I also picked up book, volume three of my, my, my love mix up, and this is just a really sweet story I'm reading very slowly. I think I looked in there 11 volumes. I could pick up the pace um we're following this high school student Aoki who has a crush on his classmate Hashimoto but he finds out um when he borrows an eraser from her that she has a crush on a different classmate Aida um he asks to borrow an eraser from Hashimoto and it's broken in half and it has Aida Ida uh like carved into it and so that's how he finds out that she has a crush on their other classmate then that classmate bar acts sees the eraser and thinks that Aoki has the crush on him so <laughs> Hashimoto is female 
and Aoki and uh, Ida are both males. And then there's there's a friend of Aoki's whose name I, it's Aida. So there's Ida, I D A, but there's also an A I D A guy as well who's friends with Aoki, and. <sighs> Aoki is, is a very nervous dude. <laughs> and it's funny. Um, so over the top with his nervousness and then embarrassment when he makes mistakes or says stuff that he didn't mean to say. Um, and it's very cute, like very sweet, cute high school romance thing because he starts realizing he actually does like Ida. So this is boy love um, manga. And yeah, the story goes from there. In this volume, um, I mean, this is spoilery, but I don't think that matters as much, maybe, for this series, but I'll put it on the screen, spoilers. There was a misunderstanding, there were several misunderstandings in the previous two volumes, and now everything is clear, and they decide to date, and I think they're starting to understand one another. Um, all four of them, honestly, are starting to understand one another now that we're putting the misunderstandings and, mis and assumptions and some of the shyness to the side, and I'm very happy and ready to read volume four. So that can go for uh, graphics along as well. I'm going to give that 3.5 stars, I think not mind-blowing but still like we've moved to the next step the um the reason these two don't count for the amazing readathon is because we are supposed to read books that fit specific prompts for each city and we can only read the next city once we can only read the cities in order so we can't skip ahead or whatever um and i've what I did at the beginning of this week uh, was figure out how much I could read by the end of the month because this will be uh, the month ends on the 30th and the end of the readathon ends on the 30th. So looking ahead and trying to prioritize what I need to read. Um, I didn't mention this, but the city we became is also on my shelf destruct list. These books I have to read in the next six months or return them and I'm happy to do that because that was top of the list I also have uh I really want to catch up on my own read along the remix class <laughs> to read along uh I read one book for that in earlier this month I'm trying to get to the next two so the next city stop for the amazing read along is Cape Town to read a book with nature on the cover and as you can see we've got some I think these are hyacinths and I forget um, but we've got some flowers and greenery this is also the I think this was the May book for my famous classes read along this is a self-made voice by Anne Marie Mecklemore. This is a Great Gatsby remix. I am not rereading Great Gatsby because I re I read a manga version last year, so it's fresh in my mind. The next city after Cape Town is Atena Narivo, and that is to read a book with religion in it, and. I already have this month all within this month I double checked um, so that I'm going to put the Morrigan towards um, I talked about that a little bit before I went on a retreat at the very beginning of this um, month the first weekend and I started reading listening to that audiobook in the week before and while I was at the treat because it was the Morrigan's call retreat. Um, the Morrigan is a goddess to some and the book 
was about um, how to honor this particular deity and work with her in your magic and your spiritual practice, which it's, it's a spiritual religious book. So about specifically focused on a particular goddess. So it fits. Um, and yeah, that is the sixth leg. Um, if I can, for the seventh leg, I want to read My Dear Henry, but I will get to that once and talk about it once I finish this. Hey, hey, hey. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, I have my last uh, herbal first aid workshop. It's from 10 to 1. I'm going to the Bronx Forest. So that's why I meant by hitting the ground running may include some clips of that because I included those. I, I'm going to take some video anyway. So why not include it in the vlog? And while traveling to and from there, I'll listen to My Dear Henry. I have a physical copy. But it's probably best not to carry it around to lighten my load. Not that it's super heavy. It's about as big as self-made boys. That would be for my seventh leg. My sixth leg. And, uh... To, oh, God. Um, Tenor and Revo is, uh, the one I said I read already. Uh, the Morrigan. So that's covered. Uh, no bonus points for that. And my dear Henry, I didn't find anything about Kaylin Bagerin, um, being LGBT plus. So, but I do believe there's romance in it. And outside of the amazing readathon, I believe it is a male male romance. So. There's rep if um, you're looking for that as well. Also, at least one character just from the cover is black, and we have a black author, Kaylin Barron. So, that will probably be my last read for the Amazing Readathon, and maybe for the month, though I'm halfway through Fantastic Four Life Story, but. No, no sightseeing for me.
Oh my God, you're already going. Huh. Hi guys. <clears throat> I, as you saw, went out last night. I got home at two and then I was up till three after that, um, submitting my books and whatnot. Um, no, 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 where are we going with this? I, oh yeah, I did wake up in the morning and I realized we don't have the exact location where we're supposed to meet. It just said Bronx Forest, which is a whole forest. <laughs> so, um, contacted Journey, was figuring that out. I set everything up, um, except, so I have two phones. This one I film on, so it's not connected to anything, and then I have my regular phone. What I had done last night before I went out was uh, go on Hoopla and check for the last two books. I downloaded Self Made Boys before I went out. Um, but just that. It took a while, so I didn't download My Dear Henry. So this morning I was just focused on getting dressed, eating, and figuring out where I'm going. And I was late. Um, but it is what it is. I wasn't the only one. And, yeah, so I went to, you know, well, this, this phone is the one that I use for filming, but it also, uh, is the one that I use for my reading apps, like Libby and Hoopla. Went to turn this phone on, and I was like, oh, crap, I can't listen to the audiobook for my dear Henry, because I didn't download it last night. So it is what it is. I got home. No, uh, I met up with my parents who were at High Hop. Um, I got home and I watched the live show for the Battle of the Booktubers round one, which I've been very into. Check out uh, Danny Dabbles. Uh, Yes, I'm looking at Danny Dot Dabbles. Um, she had a playlist B two B O T B round one, and it's really cool. So anyway, I was very into it, and I had submitted some questions, <laughs> a question honestly that I want to answer. But yeah, I wanted to know who won this round. Blah 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 blah. I fell asleep in the middle of watching the show. Um, they had sprints afterwards, which I'm gonna use now, actually, to watch things. So, I have not started this at all. I submitted not too long ago, um, the Antanarivo, uh, City Prompt book, which was the Morrigan, and... This will be it. Leg 7 is sold, which I'm not going to talk about this very much. Same like Self Made Boys, this will get its own dedicated vlog video like all of the remix classics. Uh, I will say that this um, is a remix classic. I'm doing a read along of all of these. This is the June book. So if I can finish this in June. <laughs> By tomorrow, I will be caught up on my own read-along. Um, this has LGBTQIA plus rep. I don't remember if I looked up Kaylin Barron having, being uh, out about being part of that community. But I think this will have some romance rep because... Uh, I think the main character, Gabriel, is, uh, interested in Henry, Henry Jekyll. So yeah, let's, let's go. I'll come back once I've finished it and wrap up the amazing read along in this vlog what's up um so because i was in a rush 
didn't come back to do a lot of check-ins, which is fine. It's a fairly short book, um, less than 350 pages. Uh, 304 is the amount. Uh, but I finished Self Made Boys. The latter half definitely made the first half better, worth it for me. Um, I think this is better if you haven't read it recently. The original, um, Great Gatsby. I'm kind of glad I didn't have access to the movie, which is unfortunate, but you know, someday. That being said, I think 3.5 is gonna be it for me. This doesn't feel like a 4. I guess maybe a 3.75. I don't know what it is. Like, there's a happy ever after. Um, a lavender marriage maybe in the works, which is really cool. Look it up. Look it up. Um, I love that. I love Daisy. But for me, Daisy is the real villain in the original Gatsby. Like, if there's a villain, um, like, nobody likes Tom. But that's that's a given. Just a dislikable character. Um, not a great guy at all. A bad guy, in fact. But um, I f it was so cute, Jay and Nick. And Nick not realizing. But also, I think we're f coming from his point of view to an as an aspect. So understandable I just it was sweet and Anne Marie McLemore they did their thing I don't know if I wrap this up last night or not I know I talked about it last night but I just wanted to come in and say something just in case so that is the May book for the realm of Remix Classics read along so happy to be reading Anna Marie Mecklemore once again. Can't wait to pick up another one by then. Alright, I forgot I neglected to mention. The reason I'm reading this for the soul prompt that prompt is a book with a light source on the cover and this has got candles. You don't know how happy I was. You don't know how happy I was when I saw this. Cause I was like, yes, yes. Yes, getting something else I need to read done this month. So, light source on the cover for soul. Hey guys, I'm trying to make this quick because I have 10 minutes left of space on my phone. <laughs> I have finished My Dear Henry. I could have finished this at any point this day. Today, I was just picking up other things and doing other stuff and procrastinating. But I have finished, just done, and that is the last book for the amazing readathon and for the month of june this as a reminder is my soul book book with a light source on the cover there are candles love that for me this is also the june book for my own read along the remix classics read along this is a remix of dr jekyll and mr hyde hmm i'm still thinking about the rating but i'm thinking it's probably gonna be a 3.5 as well nothing super groundbreaking happening here uh, there's not much more to say because I am doing uh, dedicated vlogs for these books the remix classics so do go and check that out I will try to have a link in the description down below so to wrap up the amazing readathon and the month of June I read a total of 13 books seven city prompts and six books for face off weekend those are really short so um 
I'm happy. I don't feel overwhelmed. I don't feel like I never want to pick up a book again. I am so ready to pick up something that's not prompted. Though I did sign up for the Tarot Readathon. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with me? Um, I took a plane to Seoul. I've taken a plane for the last like four prompts, I believe. Yes. And uh, even so, um, I have 1,350 GRC left, but I'm not making it to LA because there's three more cities to go. Something kept telling me to check, so I looked and Kaylin Barron is, uh, has identified publicly as pansexual, so bonus points for this one. Uh, reading an LGBTQIA plus author. With, uh, no sightseeing for me because I've just never caught up on the city prompts, unfortunately. But yeah, I've read two books that were teen genre and two with LGBTQIA plus authors. Three books that were teen genre, excuse me. No host favorites, unfortunately, uh, you know, it's all good. And yeah, I think that is it. Total travel points, 4,298. So I'm happy in a couple of days, Brie, who's doing the closing sprints, will tell us which team won. But um, I'm happy with the way this went, especially since now I can do my mid-year wrap-up and feel a little bit better because I was looking at 30-something books like, who are you? Uh, but yeah, guys, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the notification bell to let me know that you enjoyed this. Share so other people can see this hot mess of a vlog. I don't know <laughs> what I'm going to do. But yeah, links in the description to everything I've mentioned here, all of the books, and my social media, if you'd like to follow me there. Also my story graph and it's, uh, Goodreads accounts if you'd like to be my friend on either or both those. And a 10% off discount code to my Etsy shop where I make all natural bath and body products as for magical and mundane purposes. Also a link to my Patreon with have some exclusive bookish videos in the grapefruit tier so do check that out thank you guys so much and i'll see you in the next video bye